This is the story of two trains, traveling in opposite directions on the same line. One makes a drastic error, and it was all caught on camera. This is the story of the Kismet train collision. On the morning of June 14th, 2006, two BNSF freight trains were traveling along the Stockton subdivision through California's Central Valley. The southbound train was a manifest, designated MRIC BAR 1-13. The train consisted of 55 freight cars and 7 locomotives on the head end. Leading the train was BNSF-944 CW 4059 followed by National Railway Equipment or NREX ST50 number 5473, another BNSF-9-1065, a First Union Rail or FURX ST40-2-8110, BNSF GP30U-2437, BNSF ST40-2-7065, and finally BNSF-9-997. In the opposite direction was a northbound unit train carrying cement. This train consisted of 30 freight cars and 4 locomotives, all of which were Dash 9s. Leading the train was BNSF 4479, followed by BNSF 4715, Norfolk Southern 8967, and lastly BNSF 4576. As mentioned earlier, the two trains were traveling along the Stockton subdivision, which runs between Richmond and Callaway Yard just south of Fresno. The line is primarily single track, with a number of passing sightings along the way to ensure that trains traveling in opposite directions can safely pass each other. In the case of these two trains, they would be using the siding at Kismet, in which 4059 would stop on the main line just before the switch, allowing 4479 to divert into the siding and safely pass 4059, thus allowing the two trains to pass each other without incident. A surveillance camera in the cab of 4479 shows what happens next. At the start of the video, the train can be seen passing a yellow over yellow signal, meaning to be prepared to divert off the main line at a restricted speed. Not long afterwards, the train passes the Amtrak station at Madera, California. Then it rounds a wide bend, and the sighting at Kismet comes into view. At the same time, the light of 4059 does as well. However, at the time the two trains come into each other's sight, both realize the danger that is lurking, and both trains are thrown into emergency. The crews either brace for impact or jump from the locomotives, and the green light at the east end of the siding changes to red, indicating that 4059 has entered the block. And at 5.51 a.m., it happens. The two trains collide head-on at a combined speed of 60 miles per hour. The impact derails three of the locomotives and two freight cars from the southbound train, one of which smashes through the cab of the last unit. As for the opposing train, all four locomotives and 14 cars come off the track. Amazingly, despite all of the damage sustained, all five crew members from each train survived, having either rode out the impact or jumping seconds before. But now the question is, what could have caused such a freak accident to happen in the first place? An investigation by the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, was soon launched. During drug testing of the southbound crew, they found traces of crack cocaine in the conductor's system, which is a drug that can impair your vision and make operating machinery such as a locomotive very dangerous. In addition, during interviews with all three crew members, which included the engineer, conductor, and brakeman, they stated that either the signal at East Kismet kept changing from red to green, or that sunlight was making the signal unreadable. However, both statements were proven false, as a test train was sent out a week after the crash, and it indicated that all signals were working as they should have been. The train should have stopped at the red signal at East Kismet. The same test train and astronomical reports also found that the sun would have first come into view at 5.53 a.m., two minutes after the collision occurred. The FRA also ruled out any mechanical problems with the trains, so therefore, the blame went solely to the crew of 4059 for not reacting to the signals properly and stopping their train. Whether the cocaine in the conductor system contributed was never determined. As for the locomotives involved, all but one made it out. 
8110 was eventually sold off to Web Asset Management and currently operates at the Kansas and Oklahoma Railroad. 2437 went back to BNSF, but in later years was sold to Larry's Truck and Electronic and in 2020 was put in storage in Galveston, Texas. As of early 2022, the locomotive has been moved out of storage and is somewhere in the Midwest. If anyone knows its current whereabouts, please let me know. 7065 also returned to BNSF, but in later years was sold to Helm Leasing and eventually to Norfolk Southern, where it currently runs as number 3517. 4576 was repaired and repainted into its Heritage 2 colors. However, the biggest difference is the different font on the number below the cab. 997, despite having a freight car go through its cab, was also repaired and repainted into its original Heritage 1, with again the biggest difference being the different font on the number. 4059 was amazingly repaired and repainted into its original colors. 4479 was also repaired despite the damage it sustained, however it was repainted into BNSF Heritage 3 colors, as were 1065 and 4715. 8967 was also repaired, however in 2019 the locomotive went into Norfolk Southern's rebuild program and was converted into an AC44 C6M and was renumbered to 4208. This means that the only locomotive that was not repaired was NREX 5473, which was deemed a total loss and eventually scrapped. It's been 16 years since this crash, and even since then it has been speculated that positive train control, had it been installed, could have prevented this crash. However, we cannot always rely on technology to do everything for us. We must always ensure that we keep doing our part in making sure that we know what is going on to ensure that something like this never happens again. Yeah.